Here's our tale of the tape for the heavyweight championship of the world. Rico Verhoeven, 29 years old, but he's an inch shorter and will have a three inch reach disadvantage to the man known as the Scorpion Sting. Slight fight advantage for Mlad and Brestovac, but a key thing we know is that left kick and that KO percentage of Brestovac. Looking at the fight metrics, longer time in the ring is Rico Verhoeven, seeming that last of his 17 fights have been five rounders. Brestovac always likes to end it before. Knockdown ratio, Rico has never been knocked down. Strike differential plus 3.6. So Rico's going to go on the offense, where Brestovac is going to keep distance to land his power. Rico has never been knocked down. You can look at the scoring for the site is with the following prioritized criteria, starting with knockdowns, followed by cumulative damage inflicted, followed by number of clean scoring strikes with an emphasis on spectacular techniques, followed by normal techniques. Finally, if there's no clear advantage, judges are looking for aggression. We have open scoring tonight. Five judges will score it. You'll see their scores after each and every round. They'll also be broadcast on the screens here in the arena, so the fighters and their camps will know where they stand as well. The keys to glory for this bout for Rico Verhoeven. He needs to control the ring with his defense and his pressure. He's got to use his boxing to get inside and shell up Brestovac and really look to land his low kicks. Where Brestovac, he needs to keep distance. He needs space for that southpaw left kick. And he needs to keep throwing it at different levels, be unpredictable with it. And he needs to make sure he stays busy and really looks to counter. As we look at our odds for this fight, Rico, a massive favorite, nearly 12 to 1. That's unheard of in kickboxing. Needless to say, if Brestovac wins tonight, it will be the 2018 upset of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event is a rematch dating back to Glory 28 Paris between a challenger whose glory wins have all ended in knockout and a champion whose unprecedented reign over the division now enters its sixth year. This bout sanctioned by the International Sport Kickboxing Association. And at the bell, your referee is Paul Nichols. From Birmingham to Boston, glory kickboxing fans are tuned in and watching around the world. It's time for glory! Let's meet the challenger. This Muay Thai national champion is coming off a 37 second knockout in Amsterdam at Glory 45. His professional record, 56 wins, 12 losses, one draw, and 35 career knockouts. He stands six feet, six inches tall, 1.98 meters, and he weighed in at 261.7 pounds, 118.7 kilos. He fights tonight out of Zagreb, Croatia. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Mladen, the Scorpion Sting Brestava. His opponent fighting out of the white corner puts his 15 fight winning streak on the line along with the glory belt. He is a veteran of over 63 professional bouts consisting of 53 wins and 10 losses with 16 career knockouts. He stands six feet five inches tall, 1.96 meters, and he weighed in at 256.2 pounds, 116.2 kilos. Fighting out of the Netherlands, he is the reigning and defending undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. He is the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. And the referee in charge of this championship belt is Paul Nichols. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? World title fight, I expect you to fight for it. Touch gloves if you like. Break. Will the longest reigning Touch. champion Touch. in glory Touch. history Touch. continue Touch. that reign? Or can Miladin Brestovac pull off an upset for the ages? The king of kickboxing defending his title for the seventh time. Fight. His first ever fight in England. Here we go, five rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. This 
Strategy for Rico to avoid that left kick is to stay close. He needs to keep that right hand nice and tight. In their first fight, Rico really crowded Brestovac, didn't allow him to get that left leg up high. Yep, and Rico's gonna try to go for that back leg as well. Rico predicted a third or fourth round stoppage. He used to not say things like that, Joe, but he's gotten more and more confidence, especially after coming off the 2017 knockout of the year against Jamal Ben Sadiq. Yeah, and he stopped four of his last five opponents, so that feeling of finishing someone, you want to keep that. Decisions just don't feel as good as knockouts, so Rico wants it. Rest of us being very patient here. And Joe, if he doesn't land that left high kick, what's Brestovac's plan B? Well, it should be to box a little bit. Um, he says he's been improving his boxing, and that could be that thing, that trick up his sleeve he's talking about, his improved boxing skills. Great. Rico already showing some redness on the right side of his rib cage. One of those body kicks connected from Brestovac. And you can see in Rico's stance that he's ready for that left kick. He can stay a little bit more bladed, which means he can turn sideways a little bit more. He doesn't have to worry about right kicks, so it's called the bladed stance from Rico. Brestovac coming off a performance of the night award for his head kick. Victory against Hesti Gerges at Glory 45. So both men very capable of scoring a knockout here with just one punch or kick. Rico can tear you apart downstairs. Yep. Rico's doing good too at changing his low kick, sometimes going to the back leg, but really focusing on that inside leg of Brestovac. Good lead hook there from Brestovac. Rico's so focused on the legs. Let's see some hands. And now Rico with a high kick of his own to end the round. And not only does Rico have redness on the right side of his ribcage, he's got a welt starting to form there. Yeah, it seems like a little hematoma somehow. Not sure what it's from. A little pocket of blood filling up. There it is. Could a rib be out of place, maybe? Uh, from where it's placed, I don't think so. But you never know. Either way, Rico, as usual, as calm as you'd like. Round two now. We'll see how the judges scored it momentarily. All five to the champ. And Brestovac is expecting Rico to pressure more than his last fight. But Brestovac is dangerous because he can throw that high kick from such close ranges. Even when he's hurt. Yeah, it's very impressive to see a big guy like that from such close, close range, still get that leg up that high. A very tentative first round. 19 total strikes landed between the two. Yeah, Rico all week was very respectful of Mladen. Talking about how good he is, how he should be ranked in the top three. And the questions about Rico now are maybe not who's gonna beat him, but will he ever beat himself? Rico has so much going on outside of the ring. He's a huge product endorser in Holland. He's on all the late night talk shows. He's got a book out. He trains, he goes around the country and trains children in physical fitness. He was just in an animated movie called Ferdinand where he was the voice of the bull Ferdinand. He's always got something happening, Joe. Yeah, that was my one big nice I was worried about was 
him doing too much outside of the ring and not focusing, but his corner, Dennis, Crowell said, you know what? We make sure we cut that stuff out close for camp time, so he's prepared. But Rico found those low kicks now, especially that back leg. Minute and a half to go here in the second round. The rest of us trying to go back to the right side of Rico's body. There's Dennis Crowell, the trainer for Rico Berhoeven. And Rico did a lot of training here in the UK with Peter Fury, legendary boxing trainer. Yeah, he really credits working with Peter for his boxing and, and his jab work especially. But Rico found those legs. <laughs> Like he does with most of his opponents. Stays patient, counters well with the low kicks, sets him up with his punches. Controlling the ring. Left hand to the temple for Rico. Rico doing a great job of keeping those hands up high. Rico got caught coming in with the right hand. Not sure how much damage was done, but a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day so far for Brestovac. Yeah, Brestovac has thrown that lead hook a few times. Rico defended, but still a heavy hand that, you know, could go through the defense of Rico. He needs to keep those up. Yeah, this is a really good technical kick-based game. But Rico's doing a good job at using his boxing to get on the inside, to get Brestovac to shell up, and then he has free range at the legs. There he is using some front kicks as well, which is a good strategy. You don't always want to throw round kicks. You got to mix in some front kicks once in a while. Try to change the angle, then go back to the legs, because Brestovac knows Rico's going back to the legs as soon as this round starts. Fight. Round three now between Rico Verhoeven, the champion, and Miladin Brestovac in the black gloves. He's the challenger. This is a rematch. They fought in Paris. And according to our judges, Verhoeven up comfortably two rounds to none. There's some of that boxing Rico's been working on. When, you, when you're boxing Brestovac, you can't overextend your right hand, Joe, because it's not there to protect your face if the left kick comes. Yeah, and he knows that. That's why he's staying technical, and he's really throwing punches in, in close range. He's not just going to reach from the outside with his punches. So that's why you see him really pressing, trying to keep Brestovac against the rope. Yep, kick followed punch, I like that. Oh, big uppercut! Rico said he probably stopped Brestovac in either the third or fourth, and things are looking good here. Yeah, this, this attacking of the legs is gonna add up. Brestovac won't be able to box much or kick much more with a few more low kicks. And we haven't really seen too many high kicks from Brestovac. It's just showing good distance control from Rico. Kick distribution, Joe. Restovac going to the body 14 times. Verhoeven to the legs. Right. Verhoeven now working a lot of his boxing because he knows Brestovac's legs are hurt. So he's going to go upstairs, and then when Vladin doesn't expect it, there comes the low kicks again. There he goes back to them. You can see the redness on both the left and right leg of Milan Brestovac. 
Another good strategy for Brestovac would be to use his left knee. He knows it's the high kick and the body kick is not really possible because of Rico's pressure, but the knee's there. As Rico's expecting something round, a knee up the middle could be a good strike. Rico on cruise control right now. Inside boxing from Rico, that's been the story so far. He's dominated on the inside. That's where Joe said he needed to be. Yep, it's the safest place for him with those low kicks. And it gets to show some of his improved boxing. And hey, you're inside. You got to close distance against the southpaw. The leg, the back leg's a little further away, so Rico needs to be closer to get it. Here's some kicks from Rico, trying some high kicks of his own, but that's the one I really liked when he followed his right hand after that, trying to change up the pace and the tempo of the fight. Boom, comes over right off on that. And you can see Verhoeven, one of my keys to victory for him was to really close distance with his boxing. And once he's in there, he's got to find that right moment to land the low kick, because Brestovac is waiting for it. While he's waiting for it, it leaves him open to Rico's boxing, so... The inside boxing has been the most successful for Rico. The championship rounds now here, rounds four and five. Brestovac needs to change something, get some momentum. What can he do? Well, I think it's the knee. His boxing has been doing well, but Rico's doing good defensively, pressuring him, not creating space for the kick. So I think some good inside punching, maybe a nice clean uppercut. Yeah, gliding through it there, and some knees. I think an uppercut or knees is going to be his best chance here. Brestovac has not won a round, according to all five judges. But so far, Rico has completely neutralized Scorpion Sting. There's a high kick. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, he's always going to be dangerous no matter what. Looks like he's out, but he'll still find it. It has certainly been more king than sting thus far. Nice punch kick combination from Rico. Body shot from Brestovac. Right high kick, high kick from Brestovac. <laughs> clubbing left hook from Brestovac, who's having a better round here in round four. Body kick. Yeah, but he threw with different tempo. He threw the, the left hand right behind it. Mixing it up. Oh, and a low blow there. He asked for the knee, but not low. <laughs> Let's see it again. Right there. Rico will try and walk it off. He has up to five minutes. He tells our referee, Paul Nichols, he's ready to go. Let's see if Brestovac can kind of keep the momentum he was slowly building here in round four. Brestovac always looking up to see how much time's left. Not much, not enough. I don't know if he's looking to see how much time I have left to do damage or how much do I have left to survive. Good point. Oh, overhand left. Big punch from Rico. Rico 
Kruger. Nice step. Stepping low kick. Hugo has been working his southpaw a lot. Let's see if he can mix it in a little bit. Three minutes to go for the heavyweight championship of the world, and Miladin Brestovac needs to find something extremely special in his arsenal. And he takes it back. Now he's got to really look to land more of those unorthodox shots. Like I said, knees, uppercuts. But that left kick isn't landing, so he needs to find something else. Do you want to be the first to get access to tickets, first to get exclusive videos, news, and fight gear? Register now to join Glory Fight Club on glorykickboxing.com. Join the premier stand-up combat sport. Be one of our super fans. Glory Fight Club. All right, Joe, what are you telling Milan Brest about here with three minutes left? Well, he's got to leave it out there, try to find some energy and put something together. I feel it's got to come from his boxing or his knees, but he's got to put stuff in combination. He's got to find that energy. It's highly likely this is the last shot Brestovac will ever get at a world title. If he can take that sort of mentality into this final three minutes, who knows? Maybe he lands something big. Yeah, like a single shot is not going to do much against Rico. You have to try to find an angle. You've got to angle off slightly, do something different. Let's see if Rico does what he did in his last fight against Jamal Ben Sadiq and go for the knockout, even though he certainly doesn't need to. He just went back to the inside low kick. <laughs> Total strikes landed. 90 for Verhoeven, 49 for the Croatian. We really haven't seen a ton of left high kicks from Brestovac. Nope, it's Rico just doing a good job at shutting it down. Thrown 11 head kicks as Brestovac only landed two, and those were both partially blocked. Rico looking to knee the legs in the clinch. <laughs> 90 seconds left. Oh, good combination from Rico walking forward. Rico looking for his 16th straight victory in glory. Seventh title defense. He makes great fighters look below average. And we haven't even really seen Rico be in too much trouble. We did see it against Jamal Ben Sadiq in the first round, but he showed good championship skills to come back and get that late finish. Prestovac's head snaps back. There's that left high kick. Rico able to block it. That punch actually woke Prestovac up a little bit. But back into the corners and against the ropes. And an uppercut. Give Prestovac this much. He has taken some hellacious shots and continues to stand up. Rico again, shutting down those body kicks with the cross block. And that's it. Easy money for Rico Verhoeven. Another dominating performance over a top 10 heavyweight. Yeah, and his style is perfect for a guy like Mladen Brestovac. Rico always has good pressure, good defense, and solid low kicks, and we saw it once again. We'll make it official when we return to Birmingham, England. We welcome you back here to Birmingham, England, our World Heavyweight Championship fight in the books, Joe, and it was one-way traffic from the opening bell. Yeah, very similar to the first fight from Glory 28 Paris. Rico doing a good job at pressuring, really staying close to Brestovac to avoid that kick, but Brestovac really didn't have that space and that distance to be able to throw that head kick like we all thought. 
but good strategy, good ring control from Rico being able to use his boxing and really get on the inside and attack the legs. But even in the later rounds, Brestovac was dangerous. He got a little bit more comfortable with his boxing, but again, Rico so dominant with that pressure, his improved boxing, and again, constantly going back to the legs and a lot of respect between these two. Here are the final statistics from our World Heavyweight title fight. Look at this, 183 strikes thrown for Verhoeven. He landed 113, nearly exactly double what Miladin Brestovac landed. Here's Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here's the totals from all five of our ringside judges. They all score about the same. 50-45, a unanimous decision for your winner. And still, glory heavyweight champion of the world, Rico Verhoeven. Here to present the glory belt, our chief executive officer, Marshall Zelesnik, and our managing director of sport, Mr. Cor Hammer. Rico, congratulations on once again defending your belt. You did say you wanted a third or fourth round knockout, but you used a lot of pressure. Great boxing to stay away from his left kick. Was this the fight you expected? Uh, yeah, uh, I expected a tough fight, and that's what he brought. So this, uh, again, was a, was a hell of a matchup. And uh, that's what, for me, I want to give uh, Mladen a, less, a lot of props because he's one hell of a fighter. And I do have to know, how did it feel to be kicked in the head by him? <laughs> It doesn't feel nice, but luckily for me, I was keep moving to the left, and uh, that absorbed a lot of his, uh, his power. So luckily for me, I didn't get full power to the head. And where can we see the king of kickboxing next? Uh, the next big thing, uh, I'm not sure if I can announce. Let me look at the boss. Boss, can I announce? Yeah. The next big thing is going to be the 29th of September, Amsterdam Arena. So uh, the Johan Cruyff Arena. So this is going to be huge. Again, back in my, uh, my home country. So it's going to be huge. All right. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, the king of kickboxing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. I want to thank some people right now. First of all, I want to thank my team, Dennis, Lima, John for always be having my back, always helping me with training through ups and downs. Of course, I want to thank my opponent, Mladen Brestovac, and a lot of my sparring partners as well. And also part of my team is here, uh, Peter Fury, ringside, Yui Fury, my sparring partner, and good friends, good brothers. And of course, uh, Ralph also here, South Pole Fighters. We, uh, we had somebody uh, come from, uh, where is he from? Uh, I forgot. Spable. <laughs> Where's he from? Czech from, Czech, from the Czech Republic, Spabel. So thank you guys for helping me out during this camp. And I'm going to be back next time. It's going to be even bigger and better. Thank you guys. Are you ready for glory?